Welcome to Access Europe. It's six o'clock on Wednesday, the 2nd of August. And thank you to the over 20 people who've already arrived. And hopefully we will get many more coming as the meeting gets going in the next few minutes. As you can see on the screen there this month, we are very pleased to welcome Juan Holuna, who is one of the more recent MVPs and an excellent addition to the group. And he's going to be talking about something which I know less about than any of the topics that we've had so far. I have never used Blazor and other than reading a couple of presentations and one host notes, I still know almost nothing about it. One host based in Austria, but he is Spanish in terms of his first language. He speaks good English, but we have George <laughs> Young here. He does speak good English and he has a lovely laugh. And George Young, who is the chair of the Denver Area Access User Group, has volunteered to assist with clarifying where one who may struggle with any English words that are obscure, like blazer or something like that. You never know. Anyway, over to you, one ho. Welcome. Yeah, I'm here. Thank right. you very much. Hello, everybody. I'm so happy to be today with you. Sorry for my English. I will try to speak clear, but George will help me. Sure. I will start with my presentation. Why I think very important to speak about Blazor today. Can you see the, the, the presentation? Really? Yes. Yes, I can. Yeah. We have got a, a problem. We all of you, all of all of us, have a lot of apps for a desktop, but I think a lot of time we need that people say, the people that say, "I need a mobile application." What can we say? What can we do? Today, we say that you have an access application with users, with scripts, you can move. And we need to share that with our clients. On the right side, you can see a Blazor app. The first time you need a little bit of time, but later goes fast. You can see the same as here. How can we do that? I will I will tell today about that. My goal is that you try to work with that. And when you don't can't, you ask to people that can't. But I will say you that you can make a mobile app and don't leave your access app. You can combine both. Then we will work from that until that. How it would work? What's that Blazor? Blazor, it's a framework meet with uh, .NET, with C Sharp. You can find a lot of information in .NET, .microsoft.com. You have dry types, try the two on, uh, on, on another types of laser server, web assembly, on Maui and Maui. Server on web assembly, it's the same, but with server, you can work with all the information in the server. You don't need to download nothing in uh, the machine from the client. But when you have a lot of people at the same time, perhaps your server go slow. Then you can work with WebAssembly as today. And then the first time the user download automatically the information of, uh, in our, uh, our, of our machine. Next time, they don't need to download another time. It's all automatic. Go fast in WebAssembly because Every machine assume the work from the app. Why it's important for me work with Blazor? We have two power apps. We have two power pages, but I find a problem. 
you need a license for every user that works with Power Apps. What can you make when you have a, a client that don't have a license, a license from Power Apps? Then you have you have to Blazor. And the powerful from Blazor, it's bigger for me as the Power Apps today. We will make today an example with access under that backend will in an SQL Server on Azure sample. We will speak about elf steps to make that app. First, you need to make the web simplification. Here we go. I open then Visual Studio when I say create a project with WebAssembly. Next, I will say example Europe. Next, I will say with HTTPS, with core and with progressive app. Progressive app is the possibility to download the web solution as an, as an app. We will say later. I, I write to create. We make the project. And here we are. We have dry I three elements, client, server, and shared. Server contain all the information about the, uh, the REST API, the internal app. Client had all about the HTML. And shard combined both. For example, the class. I will try to play. I play now. And as you can see, delete more. This time we don't load all. When you have the app, that's your first app. Congrats. You have dry components, counter, fetch data with options and home. What we need now is to edit that template. First, we need to add the nuggets. The, the nuggets for access developer is the same as the reference. We need to install Entity Framework called SQL Server and Entity Framework Tools and perhaps another components. That's work in this way. Create uh, tools, create uh, administration of the nuggets, administrate, and then search. Microsoft Entity Frameworks. Here you have it. You have here. Um, Seva. Install. Accept and tools. Why do you need that? Because you will work with Entity Framework to automate all the imports from the database. Then we have two components, two, two, two nuggets. I need to update two or all on update. 
Ok. This step one. Hmm. Next, scaffold to data. It's too difficult for us to connect with the server, but we can make a scaffold. You need only to copy that. We go to console, paste. On you have the download the connection. We have made the database, the database context, and we have made yes, the database context, and we have made the controllers. Actually, sorry, the models. A model is a class. That is the script. The same as here. ID, title, description, data, user ID. ID, título, description, fecha, user ID. And the reference, the uh, combinaciones, George, las relaciones. Uh -huh. The relations between tables. Yes, the, so those are there's a um, those are foreign essentially uh, references to uh, to other tables that are set up as as virtual um, uh, virtual members in that class. So what one how Juanjo yes. me, me permite explicar un poco lo de, de la de la application DB context? Of course. Okay, um, so what what any framework does there when he said the uh, the scaffold to scaffold the database with that script that he uh, pasted down below in that window scaffold db context. So what he does is that that command when pointed to a SQL Server database will go off and examine that database, and then it will generate the connection, uh, and it will generate a class which you can see over there in models, script.cs, and so forth, a class for each and every table. And it also generates the, the entities and the relationships, which you can see here in the code that he's now highlighting. So it basically takes your, takes your SQL database and writes all the data access code to talk to that database using C Sharp. So you, instead of having to write SQL, for example, and uh, and so forth, you basically just, you can write it using um, object dot property syntax. And that's how it's set up for, for Blazor and for all .NET applications that use Entity Framework. Okay, Juanjo, go ahead, please. Thank you. Yes. As George said, you don't need to learn all of that. You can automate, but it's important, important that you know that uh, what's that. You have the models, script, script details, usuario. That's the table that we have. Script, script details, usuario. It's all imported uh, alone. Next, we move models. And application DB context. Models are the same for server and for client. Then I can copy all of that. When I share here, I can delete that. And I need to change where we are. Before we are in example Europa server models, now we are in example Europa shared. I will copy that. Me permites hablar un poquito, Juanjo, mientras of course, haces esto. You are, you are free to speak <laughs> always. Well, so what Juanjo is showing here is he's moving 
the models, the, the classes, which remember map to each of the three database tables. And he created them, he scaffolded them in the server component, which is one of the three Blazor areas there. You see client, server, and shared. And he just dragged them down to the shared area so that now both client and server may use them. And then what he has to do is to change the namespace um, when after he copied the three files to put them under shared, which is what he's doing now. Thank you. Next, we need to change the place from application DB context. It's a trick that I have. You don't need, but I love to make to make that. There we go. I I see close all. I recommend to save always the database context, the data database context with the same name. I will say that this really no, sorry. I need to change. Yes. As you can see you see in red when you have an error. Yes, you said, yes, you should. So, I copy application context when I post in the path here when I can delete now and now I can edit we are in server and I need to say where you have the models for that you can work with using you say using example Europa dot chat and now the error are not more next steam connection as you can see you have a warning here. They say, alarm, you have the password, you have all here. It's not really good. For prevent that, we can leave this and I copy in app settings developing JSON. That's information. That's in it's in JSON code. I copy here app JSON development. When I pass that information, it's a string with a name default connection into connecting strings. That was the same that I write before. Next is in program says to say that we work with that information. In C Sharp 7, you have program and program. I remember you that you have two apps, client and server. You have two programs. So first we work with program from server. And I need to paste that information with server here. I say that the application context with the default connection are here. Then you have secured your password on your user.
Good. Next step, you need to make the REST API. How can you connect with the app with an REST API? You can see weather forecast. Weather forecast is a controller with a normal connection. You have get, you have no more, only get. With that, you can connect with the server. I will try that. You say with the normal address and then controller, controller, it's the name from the document without controller. In, this, in that case, weather forecast. I will try to play now. And when I write weather forecast, you can see the data that it's in our app. We need to make the same with every model that we have. And another time we can make do that automatically. How? Very, very, very easy. For each entity, you need to add controller, go to IP, IP controller with actions that use entity framework. Where I go, controllers, right button, add controller, AP, controller with AP with action that use entity framework. And then say, which model do you need? I need script. Where you have the application context? Here and tray. You are free to speak, eh, George. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I was uh, answering a question in chat. Did you have something you wanted me to to talk about, Wangho? Here, George. Can I just ask that question that Jeff Griffiths did? raised there, uh, which you were about, I think was you were answering. One yes. of Jeff Griffiths has said he doesn't really know Blazor at all, but is the JSON with the password, is that publicly available? He worries there is a security issue there. The password that you can see, it's the same password that I have to connect with the server. First, you have here as development, but later when you publish, when you save the apps in Azure, are saved in a secure place. You don't share the password. Just uh, quickly, quickly on Klaus's question, this will entity framework will run against an Azure database or a local SQL database. So you could develop this entirely locally on your local machine. You, uh, they work with both. You need yes. only to share your connection. How did you find that connection? One place in Azure, it's here portal.atsu.com then you go to your solution i search app scripts here that's the connection when you find the same in the login window from SSMS. You can write, it's the same as I connect in a string. When you need more information about that, you can work too with the web homepage from connecting string where you have a lot of models about how can you connect with models. Do you remember the nuggets first? We have installed the nuggets from SQL Server because I work with SQL Server, but you find too, more the uh, nuggets for MySQL for a lot of connections for access to, but the only solution that I found it's uh, not free, but you have to. As you can see, we make the controller. We need to make another time when you find epi get get. 
path and delete. You can edit or change every sentence, every option to activate or deactivate that possibility. At this way, I will close that options and I will go with the solution that I made because we need to go a little bit uh, faster. I have made the server controllers. I remember you how it works. Add controller, you say AP with entity framework, and you write bell, which model you need. Do you need skip the tile, for example, and class application DB context. And then we download the three models. You can see. AP. I will try that now. As you can see, you need to write first AP and then the name from the controller. That means that when I write AP, yeah, when you write AP scripts, you can see that it's blocked. But you can work with Postman. Can you explain a little bit, George, what is Postman? Sure. Uh, Postman is a developer tool. And what you can do is you can put in any uh, web API um, URL, and it will allow you to then examine the output from from the web API and you can do all sorts of web API methods like getting or updating or deleting or putting data, posting data. So what you see here is Wanho is showing you the get, which you see on the left of the URL. And on the right, he's got the uh, the URL itself. And then down below, you can see the, the JSON uh, representations that are being returned. So as he's changing the path up in that, a text box, he's returning different thing. Here he has uh, API users. Here he's now he's changing it to scripts and you can see that coming in. Uh, so, and you can parameterize it for a little earlier. He had API slash users slash three and that returned just the third user. So it's a great tool for kind of testing, debugging uh, any web, web API, not just ones that you've written, but any web, web API out there on the internet. That's a good thing because when you make a uh, Blazor app, you have you made it to uh, a REST API. That means that you can share your information as you need with other clients. For example, you can share with other access uh, app and you share only that you say. An example, go to scripts, I say, in the controller from scripts, I have get alone. I become all the information from scripts. I become ID, title, descriptions, fetch, user ID, and two number usuario. I can edit my model with more information that are not in my table. Number usuario, but not here, but I have the connection. I can share to that. How I say with the AP that user, it's the user.name. I remember you that you have a relation that we control it within the application controller, with the DB context. So it's very easy to edit the things. That's an example with how can I edit the information. When you don't make that, it's too easy. Get. When you say 
please, I need the all information from Shariot to a list. When you need to find a record to say from users, find with ID. That is entity framework. It's really easy to learn, but when you need, you can work too with SQL information as uh, before, as you, as you know. But I recommend you to learn a little bit about entity framework. As I say, you have scripts. You become only the list from all scripts with number of usuario. Scripts send you have here. When you need more, I write, for example, the number four. I become SQL Excel. Four. SQL Excel. Why? Because I write get with an ID. And I say find that. As you can see, that was made alone. You don't need to learn all of that to paste. Of course, you can change later. You need to learn a little bit. You can learn more with time. But the first time, you don't need. You can work with path, path, post, or delete. How can I delete? What's made? Delete, but that's alone. You don't write nothing. It's made by the uh, entity framework. You can speak, we can speak a little bit more later. When you have all the controllers, usually you need to make in the client place, you need usually to make repositories. What's a repository? Repository is as all the internal work that make access with an record set. Edit, new, delete, all this, that automatic work that uh, access make need a, a repository. That I recommend it's that. I have made a global repository. I make a call, you will say later. And I will say, when the server return an error, I write that, or that, or that, or that, or that, on the information. When I work with the repository, with an interface, that say, I can delete, I can get, I can post, I can post with or without a, a body, and I can put already with body. I recommend you that you download the example that you that I shared and you can copy and paste first time that in your client solution. In repositories and post all the information. I will not work a lot of that. I remember only that I repository, it's a model or perhaps yours, can you explain a little bit besides me what's an a, a interface it is? Yeah, so this is a, sort of a, a, a non-required, but a, a better, more advanced way of handling calls. And that's called a repository model. And basically what you do is you, you abstract out your calls into an interface, a class interface. So this is object uh, pro programming. And then you pass in basically gen what are called generics. So that get T, post T, put T. And then you pass in, basically can handle any sort of uh, table type or object type in one single generic interface. So it's a way of abstracting and simplifying uh, data access to, to your web API. When you make an interface, you need later to explain or to develop that interface. That's really nice because in the app from the client, in the cloud program, you say, now I work with the repository and it's developed here. When you change something, you can make 
other solution when you need only to change that line in a program. Now I work with repository two, repository three, repository four, but you blah, you you uh, you don't need to delete the uh, all the information. You have more versions. It's easy to go uh, backward or forward with your solution. I say you make the repository, and you write in program phone client first that you change at singleton. You find all here. You need to change at singleton because I have made a global repository. Then you work with configure the service and here we write all the service that you add in your solutions. First, the repository that have made. But I made two components or sweet alarm. All these things that you add, can you hear? You need to, to write here that it's the same as reference in access that you write. I work with that, with that, with that. You have download, but now you have made a lot of components on you say that this is service, that service are here. Only copy and past the sample that I say. When we have declared that, now we test the API. You, we have made that. You have made, we can, we test that. And then come the really nice option, create the components. A component, it's an element in Blazor that you can use in every places. You find a component in the client pages. That's a component or the component or the component, another component. When you write a component, they start with page. That's the address that you need to write to go to the place when you make public. To go to counter, you need to write counter. We will try. In your solution, I write counter when you have counter. I write users. Usuarios. When you go to usuarios, of course, that's it's not uh, the normal use. What made normally? You have a shared components as nav menu, and you say usuarios go to users. Scripts, go to scripts. Counter, go to counter. You can edit that, only copy and paste that. For example, I will delete the counter. Try, and as you can see in your solutions, it's no more counter. Need a little bit more time. Yeah, we are. The published hat content. As you can see, as we made, it's responsive. because we work with uh, an element that size that's uh, with name uh, bootstrap bootstrap it's the component to work with responsive elements in the HTML. so you can see in nav menu that we can work with this with that option i write Fetch data on the reference. When we work in other element, we can navigate to, to that page. You need to write page 
und that you write. Then you have the injection. The injection is what things do you need normally? And then you have a normally HTML. You can work with conditionals, with code. If list of usuarios is not null, then I will I need to see that. But when list of usuarios is null, I need to write cargando or loading. Down debajo del, del HTML, down the HTML, you, na, you have the code. I declare a variable that's the same as dim, dim variable. I say dim list of usuarios. I will take a little bit about this that uh, usuarios page. In usuarios, it's loading, and yet you can see list of usuarios, a button, a few new. A table, edit, delete with information. What's that? Usuarios. Here you are. Hadri list of usuarios. Hadri. That is the button. Haref. Nuevo. Go to usuarios nuevo. What is usuarios nuevo? Usuarios nuevo, it's a page with the address usuarios nuevo. That means when I click, I go to other component. Then come the class, the class, the table ID, nombre, correo, and the information. I work with list of usuarios with that variable. How can I download that information? First, I declare a variable, list of usuarios. That is the onload from access. I say make a variable, an, a, a variant variable with, with name respuesta HTTP, and await, and that is the key. Do you remember the repository? Repository get a list from usuario with that address, API usuarios. What's that? That is the controller. AP usuarios. AP usuarios. It's here. When I become all the information from usuarios. That's how, that is how I become the information. I load the information. I try catch when it's true. I become the response. When it's false, I can make an error or I console text, I think. The same to edit. I will edit. When I edit, I say navigation to, do you remember that? Usuarios on an ID. It's another time. Now it's yes, it's the name, it's the name from the component. I can share a component with a parameter. I say that is the phrase usuarios and an internal variable is the usuario. And then I say the parameter is id usuario. On load, I go to the repository, to the REST API, or to the address. And then I share, and they become the information. To edit the same, I call to the IP address, and to end, I navigate to an usuary. I will say that. Um, I write. Edit, Pedros, edit. When you go to users, here we are. As you can see, I can 
update all the time, and I become the updated information. I know that it's a missing confused first. I recommend you that you download the solutions and you can read alone a little bit of information. But I recommend to say show that is all load, that is a function, and we work always with the same. I call with the interface, with the repository to the REST API. You can make two, and that's really good, private components. You don't need to share the page. You can make shared components. For example, script detail, very script detail. That's a component. And I have not address, the address. How can it work with that? I can call that component from other place. That component, it's very script detail. In script detail list, you can see that I say very script detail. I need to see scripts and I need to see something on very script detail. You can work too with components that are made as Syncfusion. Syncfusion is free when you have 1,800 uh, components that are made when it's free. You have a calendar, you have a data grid, you have a lot of information. I work with that. I say, I need to work with Sync Fusion Grid. What we come made with this, this is in, uh, uh, component, you will say. That is the information without component. That's the information with component. What have write in that list, scripts list, you can say here. Sync Fusion Grid, the data source is list scripts. That's all. When I don't write nothing, I will stop that. Only that. SP Grid data source scripts, only that you become that. Table. That's it's only one line. That line. When do you need to edit that? I can say, yeah, but I, wait a moment. That is a template, wait, sorry. That's a template. Here, I will, I need to see for every line, the detail from the script. And I need to see only one column with then title, titulo. I write details. As you can see, it will get edited. And then I work with all the components that I've made. That means that it's the same as we have normally in Access, a formula or an other formula. Here we are, the edit that we made. You are free to play with the app that it's published. Scripts records, yet it's on only details, that's a component of a component. And in my app, I say, I can write a new script here, but I need that the user can only edit the scripts. They can not write other script, but they can edit that. Summit. 
I can write a message, scripts, text to delete, text stand, text, text one in live. You can see now that I have edited that. I control what can the user to see or not to see. The let's that I will say is that when you have all made, you can share, you can publish all from here. Project compile publish. You need to publish the server app. Then you say where we you, do you need to publish in Azure, in Docker, in a file, in a server from IES, or only in Porta profile. I can say Azor. How? Wind, Windows, Linux, container, virtual machine. You have thousand possibilities. I will don't know. I, I will don't do that uh, because uh, you need a lot of time, but uh, you can download that. How much cost does? That's option that you can see come until null zero euro until try 10, uh, 13 or the 30, uh, you can uh, use more servers, but it's very, very cheaper. Or you can download and install in your server, in your IIS solution. You can try now that options, app augeeuropa.azurewebsite.net. You are free to try now. And as you can see, you can download the app. Yeah, have it. It's as a uh, local app on the telephone. We have read about that. On you can to publish the app, you can use the, the components. It's important to say that I recommend you to work with that file. Uh, imports. When you work a lot of time with a component, you can write in imports the path from that component. On that, you don't need to write another time the path. As you can see, it's not easy, but you will have made in one hour an easy app. You can try to work with your own app. I recommend you to make the first time not alone, or as I make, I have a three developers that they work for me. When uh, a user need an access app in Blazor, they made that, but later you are free to edit, to modify your app. Then you are under the control from your app. Then you have opened the possibility to work with a mobile app without leave your access app. Uh, thank you for your patience. Thank you for your, uh, your attention. Sorry for my English. I hope you have understand me a little bit. And yet, now come the questions. One ho, thank you ever so much on behalf of everyone here. Uh, and there were 30 people here earlier, which was the best attendance we've ever had, by the way. Thank you on behalf of everyone for an excellent presentation. As somebody who doesn't know C Sharp, I am going to have to watch this two or three times before I get to even vaguely proficient. But can I just ask two quick questions before I then pass over to George, who's going to do a summary for us. If several of us download and edit this, will we each see each other's edit? Or will we only see our own, if you like, firewalled edits? No, no, you can see that. I will edit my solution. I have. I write the solution in a GitHub with the control version. And you have a repository public that I made public that with app auge 
Europa too. You need to copy that code, github.com, Lunasoft uh, uh, 2001, on app user group Europa.git. You go to Visual, Visual Studio. When you say, I need to clone a repository. Which address? That address. Where? I will say here. Clone. When you have the same that I have. All that I have. You don't, uh, do, do, you, you need only to edit uh, other things. I recommend you not to work with that repository, but you can copy the path from repositories. You can say, how do you made with that page? How do you made with that page? That it's a template for you, free, and you can work, edit, with other solutions, you can copy and paste. I recommend you, of course, that you work with your own DB contest, your own database. I will leave that database a couple of months and later I will lost the address, the, the, the connection. Thank you, that was great. That, that more than answered what I was asking, that's great. George, would you like to do a quick summary as we discussed earlier? Uh, sure. Yeah, absolutely. So the, the the Blazor app that Wanho presented is essentially it's a web app, or I guess at its at its core, it's a web page or a set of web pages. And so when he was showing the user interface that was essentially rendered in HTML, what the Blazor templates do when you when you say file new Blazor app is that it generates all of the templated HTML for you. So you don't, you're initially not having to worry about editing the HTML or the CSS and so forth. So the UI is, is rendered dynamically for you using templates. In the project, when Wanho then showed how the application was structured, so you have in the server, you had controllers and pages. And what the controllers do is they basically route a web address, a URL that's in your address bar, and they route it to some sort of action. Often it's a database call, or it could just be loading a page. In the case of the web API, when you had a controller, that generates a web API, web API call under the covers. The repository system that he talked about, where you basically use something called dependency injection to abstract away calls, that's a great programming pattern. But again, it's not required. You can manually, and for in each of the individual tables that you want to query, you can have individual calls for that. The auto generation of the scaffolding for database access Again, that's done by Entity Framework. And as Wanho showed in the controller that accesses the data, Entity Frameworks gives you sort of an object dot property uh, syntax for accessing the database. So if, if you look right there in public async task script details, you can see, or if you look here at on line 43, so he says the variable user is equal to, and then he has a call, which is the context, which is the database context, which is essentially a, a pointer to the entity framework representation of the database, and then dot users, which is the class representing the table, and then a, a call called find a sync, which is a method, which returns whatever record is found by the ID. But you could also write that out in SQL. As he mentioned, you could say with your database connection, select star from users where ID equals the ID parameter. So that's that's how that works. For the publishing. Yeah, you have um, an, an example. So that's that's using what's called a link to a SQL. 
which again uses the kind of the dot the dot object syntax so context dot script details which is a class mapping to a table and then here you're returning not one record but a list of records so it's the 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 method is to list async so what the entity framework link syntax does is it kind of takes sql and puts it into an object dot property or dot method syntax but you could just as just as easily have sql there for the publishing which he showed it was basically in visual studio you can publish it to azure as a, as a web app you can publish it to a container all kinds of things but initially he was running everything locally on his machine so you don't need Azure to expound on a little bit on Klaus's question. You don't need Azure to run this, at least certainly in development. So you Visual Studio, basically, when you build a project, it okay. uses a local web server as part of Visual Studio that it will actually run the website and you can have your database in, in local SQL or in SQLite or MySQL or whatever and you can run it entirely locally and then the publish is just when you want to deploy it for public use he talked about using third-party components i think that was pretty straightforward he went into a little bit on creating components so you can create little widgets if you will in html that then you can either use as kind of master components or you can use as just uh, little pieces of functionality within a web page. And that's what he's showing right here. And you can see here there's embedded HTML. So he's got div class equals form group on line eight. Then he's got a label. And then he uses the sync fusion text box. And then he closes the div. So when you want to get into a little bit more detail on the layout, you do have to know uh, some HTML. But initially out of the box, Laser generates everything for you based on those three sample components that they have. He talked about hosting in Azure. So if you set up an Azure account, or if you already have one, you get a free web server that you can host uh, yes. web apps in. And then a database in SQL Azure starts at $5 a month. So you, yes. can, you can mess around with it relatively reasonably. Juanjo, is there anything I didn't cover in the summary that you think I should talk about or? or you or... are, you are better than me. And I remember all of you that uh, George is, a pro, is profi about C Sharp and uh, .NET. I'm a, a newer user from Laser when I would say that for me, what's possible to start? So that means that you can start too. It's, you need time. It's really, but it's not be really, really, really difficult. Colin, yeah. anything I missed there that you wanted no, to? No, I think you've covered everything. Thank you again to One Ho. So please unmute microphones if you have a question for One Ho. Klaus. Yeah, I just want to comment that Syncfusion is a, a wonderful tool. It's officially not free. You have to buy it. You can get it free if you are allowed to get the community edition of Visual Studio. They have the same or nearly the same uh, license condition, but it's a, it's a special offer to, to develop. That, that, that's not that you are free. That's free for all the users that become less as the $1 million per year. Yeah, that, that's a community. Uh, uh, but you don't need to, to be the community. Uh, it's yeah. an offer. You, don't, yeah. you need only to, to write when you become the license. Yeah, I know I have the license, but um, I just wanted to, to talk. It's not because there are free tools for Blazor, which are officially free without any yeah, that's true. Uh, thing. But but it, the, the Sync Fusion is normally a commercial sold edition which costs five thousand dollars or so or even more and and it's it's great it's a great uh, thing because you they have to the possibility to work with Telerik. it's a rate a tool that cost thousand dollars per year but you don't need renew every year it's yeah i know well, that, i think that i know but but they have no community edition, so no, they didn't have I, no I, I uh, stopped it. And I only use Syncfusion because they are community. They try to, to earn their money 
through the community and not yes. only to the big companies. But the other uh, company, how you, how it's called, you you, you spoke with uh, is is only it's not free at all. You have to run. It's uh, not completely free, but they have they have I think seventy uh, free components. Yeah, there, there are a lot of. Um, if you, if you look at at Blazor, you you will find thousands of components. Uh, yeah. Not only rats, and their, their, their community co uh, components and, and, and everything. You find I recommend you to explore a little bit the component that exists, but you spare a lot of time. And I think the, the idea of trying, I, I never tried it myself very much. That, that was because I was afraid of Azure. But you say you can do it uh, without Azure, then I can try it. Because I don't want to go to Azure for the moment because of the cost. I understand where you're coming from, Klaus. Okay, anyone got any other questions that for Wanho? Please unmute if you have. I'd be interested in, in complex Blazor applications as well. Yeah, I was going to mention that James had asked that. Uh, there's a comment from James Spellman. Does anyone have any complex Blazor applications with Azure SQL backends that they could show us of what's possible? Recording could be muted if necessary or rather turned off if necessary. So we could do that uh, briefly later, but I will. I have another meeting to go to soon after, uh, after eight o'clock. So therefore it would have to be quick, I'm afraid. But anyway, we'll come back to that. If anyone has got anything, please mention it in the chat and we will come back to you. Just be, people are beginning to sign off. So I'm going to, if one is okay, I'm going to take over the screen again. Thank you ever so much, one ho. Right. So let me just, in case you didn't see it earlier, the bottom of the screen there you've got two links one to my website and one to the access user groups website and if i just drag this across here on my website you've got a page here down the bottom here you've got a link to a pdf version of of one host presentation and the accdb file plus you've got the information about the link if you have a problem with that and then two other links one to the app online that he showed you and the second to his github code there so if you go go to that you can download everything he used or if you are an access user group member and it's only available to members on the member dashboard page i've put on there the access blazer files as one zip file it's the only way you can do it on there those are both available now the youtube video i hope to get online within the next few days as well and as i said i'm going to need to watch this several times so thank you again to one ho he's already offered to come back with a second presentation on a different topic at some point and i'm definitely going to follow that one up so thank you again one ho is there anything else you want or george is there anything else you want to say before we move on because we don't have any other questions for me it's okay you're welcome I'm so grateful. Thank you for your patience, for your attention. Sorry for my English. I, <laughs> I know it's not really good. You are really, really good. Thank you. Your English is far better than you give yourself credit for, one ho. <laughs> uh, and you know that, really. Well, thank you. That was a truly outstanding presentation, as I said, in a topic I know zero about or knew zero about. I know a little bit more now, but not enough yet to feel confident in doing this. But I will persevere. Right. Next month was due to be Thomas Muller coming back to do a second session on better access charts. Unfortunately, due to pressure of work, he's had to postpone. And at fairly short notice, I am going to discuss a number of tools. I've got a new database analyzer app that I've been working on for several months, which is nearly complete. And so I'm going to finish that and I will give a demonstration of that. And I'm also going to show you some other tools as well, uh, which I will decide according to how much time I've got available. So that's next month. And then in October, we've got the, uh, the person who set up Access User Groups Org back in oh, 2014 or so, I think. And that's Juan Soto, who's talking about the future of access. And we've got a continuing series of, of presentations from people from different countries, different continents, which I'm truly looking forward to. So thank you, Wanho. That was excellent. You're welcome. And 
Thanks to everyone for attending. See you next month.